hey, I told the first service um, uh, <laughs> that every time I hear that song, good, good God, good grace, or good grace, good God, I think about my friend Michael, who, uh, he, uh, Mike Wood, he always tells me he cannot shake this when he hears this song. Good grace, good God, let's eat. You know, and I'm like, man, now that I hear, now that I hear that song today, I'm like, man, I can't shake it either. Thank you so much, Mike Wood. Um, listen, it is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Are any, any dads in here at all? Raise your hand right now. Give yourselves a hand. Everybody give the dads a hand right now. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to me as well. Thanks. Um, we've got some young dads in here. We've got some older dads in here as well. By the way, you want to know how you can tell if you're an older dad? Work out with your 21-year-old son. You have a 21-year-old son. That's your first sign, okay? I have a 28-year-old son, so. But I did work out with my 21-year-old on Friday. We've been on this, uh, this, <laughs> been on this program for a few months because he's home. And uh, man, I'm going to tell you, we were doing some deadlifts, and I went to do my first rep, and I just, I just felt <laughs> like in the bottom right quadrant of my lower back. And uh, anybody ever been there? I don't know. Maybe you've been there. And uh, so, you know, I did what anybody would do in that situation. I, I just casually crumpled up into the fetal position and, and you know, try to play it off like, yes, I'm just checking out the bar from a different angle down here. It looks, but I'm dying. People are walking in, and, and I'm trying to play it off like I'm stretching or whatever. But uh, so the reason I'm telling you that is that I'm on pain medication right now. So, so please give me some grace. Yeah, it's about to get real fun up in here. Um, give me some grace. And I'm begging you, don't ask me anything really important, all right? Because I'm going to change the answer next week. I told the staff, don't ask me any budgetary questions whatsoever. Because like, I, I, I don't want to buy off on anything. <laughs> so here's what I want to do, though. Um, I just want to briefly touch on the tension that's in our nation right now. Now, I'm not talking on that today. I'm actually going to talk about how a good church is like a good father. Uh, a good church is like a good father. And I will say it's very different in here. We're used to packing this house out, you know, no room left. Um, but a lot of our people are still watching online, uh, and that's totally fine. We're telling that, that, hey, if you're not ready to come back, don't come back. And, uh, but I want to give our serve teams a hand uh, that are cleaning this place up, making it safe for you. Can you give them a hand? Come on. Looking at you over there, Steve. Man, all these people are doing so well. But look, let me, let me go back to what's happening in our nation. There are many things right now that, that, that can divide us. And I want to remind all of us of Jesus' words, just briefly, when he said that a kingdom or a family or a church divided against itself cannot and will not stand, okay? And he said this, he went on to say that Satan, we know, is the real enemy. Can I get a better amen on that, right? And that, that Satan can't drive Satan out. He said this, only the Holy Spirit can drive Satan out. And that God wants us to be a team. He wants us to be a family. He wants us to be a church. That's what we are. Look at this verse, John 13, 35. It says this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You see that? that? What that means is that people can tell how you love God by how you love other people. It also means that people can tell how you don't love God by how you don't love other people. And uh, so, listen, this is what I'm saying. We have got to love other people more than we love our own opinions right now. More than we love our own observations. And uh, here's a tip of the day. This is just free on the side. You can do what you want with it. <laughs> but uh, I don't believe that we can accomplish that scripture through social media. Okay? Because you may have the smartest post ever. Really, you, might, you may have that. You may have the most loving post ever. But I'm just going to say that when you post that, the war that's going on in the comments below it just, it's just you can't control it, and it just causes more hurt and more pain. Something else. Here's another tip. I'm just going to propose, just stop watching the news. I don't care what channel you're watching. It is hard to love Christ. I mean, it's hard to love people like Christ loves people when we're watching that 24-7. So I'm just giving you some practical advice. So how can we be a better church? How can, 
First of all, you guys have a major role in this. You are the church. Come on, say, I am the church. If you're a Christ follower, you're the church. And so thank you, thank you. I love it. We got the kids in here. This reminds me of our candlelight services. It's so fun. But how can we love God more? How can we love people better? Uh, so this is what I want to do in the time we have. It's going to be short. But I want to talk about five ways that a church can be like a good father. Five ways a church can be like a good father. And number one, look, if you're writing these down, you can take notes in your, in, your, in your phone. We're not giving you handouts because of COVID and all that. But we must protect. That's the first way. Look, a good church does this. A good dad does this. Good churches are proactive in, in, in their in their protecting of people and, and wanting to see people healed. And that's just like a dad, isn't it? You know, I have, I have four boys and my youngest is 11 years old. I already told you I have a 28 year old. So, you know, we can pretty much relate to every demographic group that's in this church. <laughs> I'm the oldest dad and well, I'm not the youngest dad, but 11 years old, that's not how that works. But I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm talking to my 11 year old about the dangers of being online, online gaming. You know, they're all into this now. And by the way, parents, you need to talk to your kids about this. I, I'm, I tell them, look, you do not play with anybody online that you don't know personally. Like, because you don't know who they are. Am I right? I mean, they could say they're 11 years old and really they're a dude my age with short shorts and a fanny pack. You don't know, what, you don't know what's going on, okay? Uh, and so what am I doing? I am protecting my children. I am protect. That's a dad's heart, okay? And that's a church's heart. And the Lord, the Lord is looking out for your well-being as well. And, and sometimes, you know, it might get on your nerves just like a dad does. Like, hey, where are you going? <laughs> what time are you going to be home? Who are you going to be with over there? What are you wearing? Are you wearing that? Are you, are you texting and driving? Are you talking to me right now and you're driving? Okay, so, so I, think about, uh, uh, I think about John Wesley. Some of you know who he was, but... Uh, he had a group of guys that he was discipling and, and, and just a great pastor. And this group that he was discipling, this group of men, he used to regularly ask them questions. Questions like, how are you doing in, in different areas of your life? How are you doing with your integrity? How are you doing with your money? Are you, are you cheating anyone right now? Are, are you tithing? Uh, how are you doing with lust problems, your relationships, other things? And then the last question he would ask these guys was this. Did you just lie to me? Why would he do that? Why was he doing that? Was he a control freak? No. He was protecting those guys. He was protecting those guys. And look, right now especially, uh, I think we can learn so much about the hurting right now if we listen. And, uh, and, and a good church, we're looking for people to protect and looking for ways we can heal. Uh, I'll tell you what we did. Uh, you know, we have 18 locations of our church and our pastors get together routinely. Well, we did that. We got together uh, recently, and uh, we asked some of our black pastors and black leaders to just talk to us. Hey, talk to the rest of us. Come on. Give us your stories. We want to learn. We want to know. Talk to us about racism and other things. And, and we did. It was amazing. And we heard from one, one guy, uh, one uh, black pastor, 75-year-old man. Now, he's not one of our pastors. But the story came out. I mean, he was talking about what it was like growing up in his world, and he said, he said this statement. He said, I've never met a racist who didn't also attend church on Sunday. Now, I'm sure he must have grown up in the Bible Belt, maybe in the Deep South more than likely. And I also know that there's lots of racists who, who don't go to church, okay? We know this. But he meant it. That's what it was like for him. And uh, can I say something? That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Another friend of mine who uh, actually has played on our worship team, uh, he, he, he told a story at another time, and uh, he likes camping. He and his wife, and they were out camping. I don't know where, uh, but it was somewhere that's kind of like our campgrounds here where we have that sectioned off place in the lake where you can swim. And so they were out somewhere, and anyway, everybody else on the beach was white, and they were in the, everybody else was swimming, and he said, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go swimming. And she kind of looked at him like, eh, I don't know, you know, because everybody else was white. And he, and he looked at her and he said, kind of like, what, like, what? What's the problem? So he got, he got in there. He said, I just went swimming. He said, every, he said this, everybody in there got out. Everybody left. Can y'all look at me? These things, these experiences cause pain. Pain. 
And it's the church's job to find the hurting and to heal them in Jesus' name. That's what the church's job is. We protect, all right? Micah 6, verse 8 says, and what does the Lord require of you? What does he require? To act justly and to love mercy. Are you all seeing this? This is great. And to walk humbly with your God. So a good dad certainly aims at this verse, but so does a good church. Uh, we just need to be looking for those we can protect. So we're, we're protectors. The church is a protector. But what else? Uh, they are providers. Write that one down. They're providers. This is the way a, a church can be like a good father. 1 Timothy 5.8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Strong words, right? But let, let, me, let me say this. A, a, a good church is not stingy. <laughs> okay, a good church is not, is not stingy. During tough times, like we're in some tough times, a good church looks around and, and, and looks for the needs they can help with first before even thinking about themselves. Like, where are the needs? Where can I get involved? Uh, a stingy church is never going to be an effective church. Ever. Never. Um, here's a question that we always ask ourselves at New Life Church. We ask ourselves, if New Life Church would shut down, would anybody even notice? Man, that's a good question to think about. And I think every church should think that way. And uh, I'll be honest with you. Is it okay if I'm real with you? Is that, is that good? You know we like being real here. Uh, this, all that's happened is, you know, obviously it's affected our church budget. And we can't do everything that we want to do. But a lot of you can relate to that. Some of you are out of work right now. You, you understand. But this is also why I thank God for our church. Man, the way that you give and the way that you serve. And it's like, you're looking, our church looks for ways to be helpful. Like, where, where am I needed? Let me hop in there. And I just know this. Think about friends you've had. I think of a friend in high school that was just so stingy. I mean, nobody likes to be around a stingy person. Am I right about that? This one friend of mine, his name was Corey. I'm not kidding you. Every time I saw him, he's like, hey, man, you got a dollar? Hey, man, yeah, give me a dollar. Give me a dollar. Give me a dollar. I'm... I, I, I'm like, all of y'all had a friend like that, right? And it was like, never once did he say, hey, James, do you need a dollar? <laughs> never would he offer anything to me. It was always taking, taking. And I'm just saying, we're not friends anymore. Okay. Uh, third thing, write this one down. They are promoters. They're promoters of other people. Look at Matthew 3, verse 17. This is God talking about, this is God the Father talking about Jesus. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Can y'all see the heart of the father in that? Can you see God the father promoting Jesus? Isn't that awesome? Like, I am so well pleased with you, son. And he's telling everybody else, this is, this is my son. By the way, that's the way the church should operate as well with people. Promoting other people. Helping other people to see their worth. And I want, to, I want to tell you uh, what's going on with one of our campus pastors in another city. Uh, Marcus Brown, some of you know this story, some of you don't, but this is very recent. Uh, his dad, Tommy, is also a, an, an associate pastor with our church in, in, in that same city. Well, his dad went back to Louisiana, where he's from, to visit. And while he was there, he, he, uh, he contracted COVID. And so Marcus, he and his son, Austin, went down there to, to help, and they also contracted the virus while they were down there. And so, uh, so some of this is, has, has, has some good to this story. Some of it is very sad. In fact, the dad, Tommy, he died. He went on to be with the Lord. He didn't make it. He fought hard, but he didn't make it. And Marcus, man, my good friend, he was touch and go for a while. So he was very, very sick. And so one of those times when his dad was still alive, still fighting the virus, uh, Marcus is in quarantine down there, and he fell asleep one day. And in his sleep that day, he had a dream. And a lot of supernatural things happened around this, this story, but one of them was this. In the dream, he saw his dad. And in the dream, uh, Marcus was a young boy playing baseball. He was on the baseball field like, like he did a lot of growing up. And he said he saw his dad coming toward him, and uh, his dad was healthy looking, young, as good as he's ever seen him. And uh, his dad just went up to him, threw his arms around him, and he told Marcus, he looked right at him, and he said, Marcus, I've been proud of you, son, my whole life. And in that moment, 
he woke up. And the nurse told him, Marcus, Marcus, I've, I've got some news for you. Your dad, he just ceased all brain function. It was in that moment that he passed away. And then he, they later told him, they said, look, it's like your dad was not allowing himself to die until he knew you were going to get better. Can y'all see the heart of the father in that? That is the heart of the father that our church should emulate. This is, look, here's a question. Who do you need to wrap your arms around and just promote them and say, I am proud of you. I am so proud of you. We need to be looking for people who need that and we need to help them to get healthy again. Are y'all with me? Can you say amen? amen? What else? Fourth thing. They're a priest. They're a priest. Now, that's interesting. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, if you're in here, look, maybe you're a single person. Maybe you're married. Uh, maybe you're a single mom or dad or you're a mom or dad of some kind. Could you please commit, commit to making your home an altar to the Lord? Yeah. What does that mean? That means that make your home, commit to making it a place that is centered on God and his presence and his principles and who, who he is in your home. Like, let's exalt him. He's the number one priority, a relationship with him in your home. That's how you need to do that. That's how you're a priest of your home, okay? Look at how uh, Noah did it. This is Genesis 8, verse 19 through 20. It says this, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. I want you to notice that Noah, before he even built a home, he built an altar to the Lord. It's because of something we've all figured out. I figured this out as a parent, that the number one thing, the thing that my kids have needed and still need more than anything else, more than shelter, more than a good job, more than anything, is a relationship with their God. That's what they need more than anything in this life. And, and so, again, a good church helps point us to this as well. Uh, and as I've, I've pastored people through the years, I've, I've learned this, that look, if you do not, I'm talking to Christ followers now, the church, okay? Say amen if you're the church. Okay, I'm talking to you. If you don't have a prayer life, if you don't have times in your life, if you don't start everything you do, every goal you have every day with talking with your Lord and being able to just lay stuff before him, giving stuff over to him, man, if you don't have that time, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna crack. You're gonna be like the walking dead around here. You're not gonna walk in the, in the will of the Lord. Why? Because of this verse in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your anxiety on him, right? The Lord, because he cares for you. We need this kind of relationship with God. And I tell you who, who I've seen this in recently is uh, watching my friend Chuck Jeffcoats, man, just going through the recent death of his brother. And listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been so in awe and I, I'm just... I'm just impressed with the way he and his family are navigating these difficult waters. I mean, this is tough, man. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Chuck. And it's because this, not because he's fake. He's, there's no fake bone in this man's body, okay? He's real. But I see the evidence of God's grace all around him. You know how you get that? You make your home an altar to the Lord. That's how you get that, okay? Last thing is this, and you can write this one down as well. They're prophets, the way a, good, a church can be like a good father is they, they're prophets. What do you mean a prophet? You can't have to explain that one. Well, let me explain it this way. It's very simple. They are speaking God's future into people's lives. Like they're talking to people about what God has for them in the future. Can we be a church like that? Please, come on. Where we're talking, to, we see people and we, and we see their potential in God, not where they're at right now. Come on, somebody give a better amen. Aren't you glad somebody did that for you? That's a dad, by the way. A dad does that. A mom does that as well, but a good church does it as well. Genesis 35, let me show you this story. With, with, uh, this is with Jacob and Rachel. This is verse 18 of Genesis 35. Then they moved on from Bethel. While, they were st while there was still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. In fact, she died. 
And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't despair, for you have another son. Like, hey, look, you have a son. Don't, don't be upset. As she breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Oni. But his father named him Benjamin. Let me tell you what's going on here. Rachel named her son Ben-Oni, which means son of my pain. Son of sorrow. That's what it literally means. And she was taking her pain of her life, what she was experiencing in that moment, and she was putting that on her son. You're the son of my sorrow. But, but Jacob, <laughs> like a good dad, he looked at, looked at that son and said, oh, no, 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 I'm renaming him. He's not going to be son of my sorrow. He renamed him Benjamin, which means son of my strength. I'm telling you, you're son of my strength. And here's the point, that people who are experiencing pain in their lives, you know what they need? They need people around them who will call things that aren't as though they already are in their lives. Who can say, you know what? God is not done yet. God has a great future for you. Look, get up. You're better than this. We're gonna keep going and we're gonna help you get there. That is what they need. That is the church's role. So some of you, you might have been born in in, in what you think is is a painful place. I mean, maybe it's, Maybe right now you feel like you're just overwhelmed with sorrow, but here's what the church says to you. Oh, no, 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 no. You may feel like you're overwhelmed with sorrow, but you know what we say to you? You're strong in the Lord. You're strong in the Lord, and we're going to help you get there. And not only that, you're going to help us be stronger because of the strength you have. We need you to know that you're needed in the body of Christ. And so I want you to do this. I want to pray for everybody here. If you would, bow your heads, close your eyes, just let the Holy Spirit do what he wants. We're just going to ask you some questions. And I just want to pray for everybody here. And the first thing I want to pray for is if you're here and you don't know the love of the Father, the Father we talked about throughout this message. It wasn't all about that, but I definitely gave you a glimpse of the Father's heart. His heart is so loving toward you that he sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you could be with him forever. And if you're here and you would say, you know, I've done some religious things and maybe even been to church, but I don't know, I don't know the Father's love. I don't, I don't have him in my life, but I want him. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus came to the earth and died and rose again so that you could have the Father. So if that's you, I just want to, right where you're at, I just want you to pray this prayer with me. In fact, I'm going to pray it from your point of view and everybody in here who needs it, come on, pray it with me. Lord, I'm sorry for walking away from you. Lord, I turn back to you right now. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus who lived a sinless life to die for my sin. Lord, I don't know why I do the things I do, but I know I need you. And so forgive me. Come on, pray that all around this room if you need him. Forgive me. I repent. And I turn toward you, a holy God. And Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross. I thank you for forgiving me now. Come into my life. Have your way. I want to serve you and be with you for the rest of my life and for eternity. Hey, no one else looking around? I just want to pray a blessing over you guys as we wrap up today. We've been doing this online. In fact, we did this today online. Just a prayer of blessing over every person. So if you would, just hold your hands out kind of in front of you, just like you're receiving a gift. Just turn it up toward it. The Bible says that he wants people everywhere to reach out their hands without wrath or doubting and just saying, you know what? It's just kind of like a sign that I'm ready for whatever you have for me, God. And as you do that, I'm just going to pray this blessing and just receive it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people right now and protect your people, God. God, we declare that your church, your people, are the head and not the tail. I declare that this church, the church, is blessed going in and going out. In the city and in the country, God, you are with us. Wherever we go, your presence goes with us. God, I pray that you would let your face smile on your people. Be gracious to us, O God, to your people. Lord, Show us your favor. 
Show your people your special grace and favor. And God, I'm praying that you would give every person in this church your peace. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and declare. Amen and amen.